Here we're going to look at a nice re-envisioning of the exponential function. So maybe the most common exponential function that we look at in calculus is e to the x, where e is that special number 2.718, so on and so forth. And the number e can be defined a number of different ways, the most popular being an infinite series or the limit of a sequence. But what we really want to dive into today is that a more proper definition of the exponential function e to the x is actually via its series counterpart. And we'll call that function exp or exp. And look, if you look at this expx, that's just the Taylor series or the Maclaurin series for e to the x. But what I want to show is that if we take this function and apply some sort of like forgetful functor to ourselves, so we forget that it's connected to e to the x at all, that it still satisfies the rules that e to the x satisfies. And this is just by direct manipulation of this power series. And so we'll prove the following things. So expx converges for all x in R. The derivative is equal to itself. And then we've got this sum product rule. So exp x plus y is exp x times exp y. Okay, so let's maybe get to the claim of the first bit. And we're going to use the standard strategy of using the ratio test. So that means we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the n plus first term of this series over the nth term. So that's going to give us x n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. I need to put my x part in absolute values because it's possible that could be negative. Then divided by x to the n over n factorial, where again that x part is in absolute values. But now we can just do some quick arithmetic on that and see that we get the limit as x goes or as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of x. But the really important thing here is that this n factorial will cancel this n plus 1 factorial down just to n plus 1. And that's because n plus 1 factorial can be rewritten as n plus 1 times n factorial. That's a standard simplification strategy when it comes to things like this. Okay, but now let's notice that x is not a variable with respect to the limit. So it's a constant with respect to the limit, which means as n goes to infinity, at some, at some point, this n plus 1 will be much, much, much bigger than the absolute value of x, meaning this tends towards 0. But we want to notice that 0 is most definitely always less than 1, but this ratio being less than 1 means that this original series absolutely converges. And since that occurs for all values of x, this thing absolutely converges for all values of x, which are real numbers. Okay, so we did this. Our next goal is to look at this second claim, which says the derivative of our exp function is itself. So we'll calculate that directly from this definition we've given ourselves for expx. So this is going to be the derivative of this sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. But we know this series absolutely converges, so that means we can bring our derivative inside. So we've got this sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the derivative of x to the n over n factorial. But that's going to give us the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n times x to the n minus 1 all over n factorial. But we probably want to re-index this a little bit because at n equals 0, something weird is happening. Notice 0 factorial is 1, but then we've got a 0 in the numerator. So that's actually the only time we don't get a cancellation like this. We didn't worry up here because we were letting n tend towards infinity, so it was bound away from 0. So what we want to do is re-index to bring this n equals 0 term out. So I'll start by changing my starting point from 0 to 1. 
Notice that there's really no worries doing that because the first term was zero in the first place. But now that we're starting at one, we can do a little bit of a simplification. We can take this n here and cancel this n factorial down to n minus one factorial. And again, that's from a similar calculation to this up here because n factorial is n times n minus one factorial. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We have this sum as n goes from 1 up to infinity of x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Now we can do a re-indexing of the sum. So let's replace n with n plus 1. That means we'll start at 0 instead of 1 because when n plus 1 is 1, n is 0. And then this will turn into x to the n over n factorial. So in other words, we've got the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. But that is our original function expx. So our function satisfies this second property. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at the most interesting property which follows from our definition, which is this multiplication addition property. <coughs> Okay, we just got done proving these first two properties. Now we're ready to look at this third. And this third will hinge on the fact that we already know the second. Okay, so let's start by defining a new function. And I'll call it f of x just kind of for ease of use. And this is going to be x, x plus y times x negative x, like that. And here, y is fixed but arbitrary. So I'll just say y is arbitrary, but it's not a variable you know, in the game of this function. x is the variable. OK, now we can take the derivative of f using the chain rule and the product rule. So let's do that. So here we'll get exp x plus y times exp minus x. That's from taking the derivative of this first function. Notice the derivative of x plus y is just 1. That's because y is arbitrary. It's like a constant with respect to x. The next will have minus x, x plus y, x minus x. That's by the chain rule. So the derivative of negative x is negative 1. But let's notice that here we've got plus something and minus something, but those are gonna clearly cancel out to zero. So now looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this line, we see that f prime is equal to zero, but that means f of x is equal to some sort of constant. So I'll just say that it's equal to a constant. But notice that its domain is all real numbers so it's really just equal to this function evaluated anywhere we want. So it might as well be the constant f of 0. Let's see what we get when we do that. So if we plug in 0 to our original function, we'll get x y and then x 0. But it's pretty easy to see that exp0, given this definition via a series, is just equal to 1. So we'll replace this with 1. So now let's see what we've got. We've got this definition of the function up here. And then via this kind of differential equation argument, we've got this other definition of the function. But now we can put these two things together to create an equation. So our equation looks like this, exp x plus y times exp minus x equals exp y. And if you're a little bit hasty, you might think that we're done. We can just multiply by exp x to both sides of the equation. That'll cancel this one out and then multiply to the correct thing over there on the right hand side. But a priori, we don't know that the inverse of this, the multiplicative inverse, is exp minus x, or exp x. But we can get that by setting y equal to 0 and see what we get. So if we put y equals 0 in this equation, which is allowed because y has been arbitrary, and this is held for all 
fixed y, so it might as well hold for y equals zero. So that's gonna give us exp_x exp minus x equals exp zero, but we already said that was one. Okay, but that tells us that we can take this equation right here and multiply both sides by exp x. So over on the left hand side, it'll cancel this thing. And on the right hand side, we'll be left with that product. So we've got exp x plus y equals exp x times exp y, which is exactly what we wanted to end up with. And that's a good place to stop.